Okay, uh, hello my friend, hopefully that you are doing great. So in this lesson, I want to share you about the base object model, a very common bastion in automation test, okay? So I'm uh, reusing the, uh, you know, the, uh, the contents from uh, the web automation uh, tutorials because this concept should be similar uh, for not only web but also for mobile as well so that's why i i just don't want to create a new content for mobile individually separately okay so let's talk about uh, the problem first and then uh, we can discuss what we are trying to you know resolve here so for example you have uh, many tests here you can see here when we have something like test stock test stock or something like that, right? And then uh, when we have something like, uh, for example, a login screen here, we have a username and the patchwork here. Uh, let me try to open the visor app here and then you can see we have the username here and the patchwork here, something like that, right? And for example, you have a lot of tests and all of the tests will go over the login screen here. And we have something like related to the selector uh, for element on the screen. So we go to the login, we go to the screen eight, uh, like something like the user dashboard or something like that. And then you face the uh, same situation again, and then you go to another, another screen. So the things here is, for example, just uh, in one day, developer uh, decide to change something related to the uh, the structure of the SML uh, file on the mobile development or something like that. And then for example, they just change something like related to the selector is now changed. So that means for example, you have around 100 test case. So that means you, you, uh, you need to go to 100 places and then you just try to change the selector value. So that should be a, a big problem, right? So uh, let's see, we have another uh, solution, another scenario for a solution. So in this case, uh, so you can see here, we have the login here. For example, we create something very common here. We have the login here. And then another common thing is the screen eight. And then we can go to different uh, screens here. So if I try to create something in common here, and then I can reduce. So one day, if we change something on that screen, we just change uh, in only one place in our code. We don't need to go over all of the tests, all of the things that we have just uh, brought in the, the code, and then we update, okay? So this is the, uh, the, the, the problem that pay object Paston gonna try to resolve. So for example, if I go to the login screen here, what I want to do that I will try to extract this screen to be a class in object oriented programming. In this case, we are going to use Java in our tutorial. So I will create a class and then I will try to have some property related to the selector. For example, I will have the property related to the username selector for the bad work selector and the locking button selector here, and then we can solve the problem, right? So, and then uh, we can have some methods uh, to interact with the element on the screen uh, by using the function in, in our code, okay? So now open your ID here, and then uh, in, the, in this structure, uh, what we need to do that we will create a new package under the source folder here, right? So we have the test folder here and all of the things we interact with the API learning here and uh, we need to create a new package. In this case, we will name it something like model. I will explain for you why we don't name it at the basic, okay? So model because under this buckets, I want to create a new buckets. Actually, actually the buckets will uh, have something like a short model and we have basic here. And we need to create a new buckets here uh, with the name model not basic. 
required to delete that one and we have something like component. So uh, we will have a lesson related to how to reuse some common component on the page. Uh, so I just want to create this is here and then uh, we can use in that lesson. Okay, but this lesson we just uh, focus on the basic uh, package here. Okay, so now under this package, I want to create a new Java class. In this case, I will name it as login base because I want to do, uh, I want to have a pay object for, uh, for that screen. In this case, it's a login screen. Okay, so now uh, let's try to understand about the uses first. So what I want to do that, I, I want to have something like this one. Okay, so I want to have something like login base equal new login uh, login base with the name login base equal new login base and then I will try to have something like RPM driver here uh, to find element right this is the use it and I will have something like login base and then I will call something like username try to return for me the element that we fight on the screen and then I can call something like the same key uh, method to send a string like a username here. So this is the usage. I just want to declare, uh, I just want to explain about the usage here. Uh, let me try to comment out updating control shift slash here and then we have a multi line command here. Okay, so this is the usage, right? So now uh, the first thing I want to do that I will create a public constructor for this class. Okay, so I will have something like public uh, constructor, but before do that, I want to create a private first, a private uh, appium uh, driver for a mobile element, appium driver. This is private and then I can try to generate a constructor. You can type yourself, but uh, when you try to generate, it uh, will be faster, okay? Because the IDB, uh, IDE supports for us that, uh, that thing, that feature. So I want to have something like the username or something like that. So actually we will not have a uh, those property in this lesson, but I want to just uh, I want to just track the expenses about the IDE feature to generate some gestor. So what I want to do that I can put something like private, uh, maybe mobile element of mobile element something like username, and then I try to duplicate, and then we have password here, and then this is the password with the S and we have the login button here, right? So now I will try to right click here, uh, there is some gesture, okay? I select all of this one and then I click on okay here. Now it's uh, because as a convention, we have the guest uh, works before the methods to, uh, to you know, recognize a, a guest in Java. But in this case, I want to, eliminate the, the guesswork here. I just put something like username here, okay? And then I just put password here because if you look at the usage I have just brought here, you can see that I just wanna call something like login by username here, right? So, and the login uh, button, that's it. And now what I wanna do that, I will try to re, uh, I'll try to change the the type of the sum of those things here. So this one should be a by uh, a by type from Selenium. So you can see here if you move the cursor here, it comes from Selenium. Okay. Uh, this uh, okay. Let me try to open the API learning bucket. I remember we have some here. Uh, we have some, uh, we already have some, you know, uh, selector value here. So we can copy from that one. 
So we have the username here and we find it uh, by accessibility ID, right? So in this case, I want to name something like username selector by uh, ID, okay? And then password, let me try to copy this one. Uh, password selector by UD, uh, by ID and login button selector by ID because we view all of the ID strategy here, okay? So this is the by one and this is the by type. This one now it should be equal mobile by and then uh, by uh, accessibility ID here. You can see we can have something like five element by accessibility ID here, right? So let me try to copy this one. And then I just put inside uh accessibility ID here I put here and I need to copy the same thing here pay here of we are missing the equal uh equal and then I will change the selector value inside so in this case I want to put something like input network here change it here and it should be login button or uh, button login this one just a little, just highlight different a little here. And now you can see that, okay, just it's not the error first, okay? So you can see that we have just abstract this, the login screen. What we have, we have uh, one pro property for Appium driver because we will use that one to find out the element, okay? And we have some private uh, property here, you can see. And this one, we are not going to change it. So let me put it at final, private final. Uh, should be match and right? Because we are not going to change those value at the runtime, right? So here we have final. And now uh, I need to return the mobile element here. So in this case, I will return the Appium driver dot five element here and I will provide the strategy here. So in this case, it should be uh, return the username selector by ID here. I put inside, you see, this will return this one. And then let me try to copy this one. So in this case, it should return for the password selector by ID. And this should return the login button selector by ID. Okay. So what happened here when you call something like login base, the instance from the login base, and you call username here, this method, you see, this method will give the FPM driver and file element based on the set or the strategy that you already provide here, right? And the same thing happened for all the elements. Now, uh, we will try to use this base uh, object, and then you can see uh, what we have just described here, how it works, okay? So now what I'm gonna do that, I will copy the set value uh, class, and then I will paste a set value with a uh, pay object model, something like that. And now I will try to uh, reduce something and then I delete something. So this one related to the login label, as you still remember, we have something like here, this is the login label. So after we open the application here, we need to click on the login label. Yeah, and because we haven't uh, created a base object for that menu, so I just want to review that one, okay? So now after the, that step, I want to have something like login base from buckets here. And I name it as login base equal new login Base and I provide the Appium driver here. So what I want to do that I want to send key here, right? So I will call something like login, uh, login base dot username, and then I call the send key. In this case, I can copy something like this one, and I just need the double quote here. Try to delete those line. Now I copy this one again. And I paste it here to replace the, uh, I don't need to create a new instance here, just call login bay, uh, this 
times should be password and I can send something from one to eight. Finally, I will call something like login base again, the login button, and then I call the API click here to click on the login button, right? So now what we want to do that I will create, I will open the terminal here and then I will stop the Appium server, enter. So after that, Appium server will stop on the default block of uh, 4723. And what you need to do that you just need to click on the run button here, select the set value with the object model and then you run it, then you can see whether it's work or not first, and then we will try to revise, okay? So now let's open this one, and then just come back to the terminal to see whether it's send the desired capability. So it's already contact and send the desired capability here, you can see here, and open the visor app here, you can see, click on login, in which is name, password, click on the login button, right? And everything is, so, okay, now we can uh, see that we have the return uh, 200 uh, status cost here. Everything is now okay. And the run here. Okay, everything is perfect. So here you can see. So now if you have another test script, something like that, and then you want to review the uh, login screen again. So what you need to do that you need to create a new uh, instance from the login base and then you call the method inside and those, uh, and those methods actually returns for you the element that it find on the screen. And then after that, uh, as you already knew that we can use the ABI and then we can have something like same key, click here and then we can interact with that element. Okay, so this is the first lesson for pay of chat pattern and how to create a simple pay of chat pattern, right? And you can see uh, how useful it is now, right? You can reduce and then for example, if one day we have something change related to the selector, we just need to come to the uh, this class and then we just need to update this thing. Right, very simple. So this is not the only lesson about the pay of chat model, but the simple, <coughs> excuse me, but this is the, uh, the, the simple and traditional one about the pay of chat. Try to practice yourself, explore around, and bye for now, see you in the next lesson, okay?